I did cool stuff <clears> like uh, on the graphing calculators. I did a lot of stuff with graphs. Yeah. And you could set it up so that it would draw each graph, and uh, it would like apply a particular shade mm -hmm. to each graph that you drew, so you could oh, tell okay. them apart or whatever. Yeah. So I had figured out, and I stumbled across this by fluke. Um, I looked at all the different shade designs. It would alternate through four yeah. different ones. And the way it did it, if I overlapped them a certain way, it actually made it look like a city at night. Oh, really? It was the coolest thing. <laughs> it was basically all it was was sign graphs. <coughs> yeah. And then what I did was I just put like some filler lines on the top so you couldn't see where all the peaks were. Oh, okay. And it just looked like a cityscape at night. Weird. It was like graphing calculator art. With like roads and like lights well stuff. no it looked more like if you were standing back and you saw like a cityscape like across a river or something oh, like okay. buildings neat because it basically all it was was just black pixels and then yeah. like the ones Fraser sign what? what you know when like they're doing the um the intro a, and you can a little more complex than that <laughs> a little less complex than that. Oh, a little less complex than that no okay <laughs> it's basically just like certain pixels will be left white and they looked like you know a tower or something because they're all in line right oh okay yeah and what's really cool too is I figured out, uh, you know, instead of having to just punch it in mm -hmm. with the uh, with the graph, I figured out how to make it put certain equations into uh, where you would draw the graphs on the calculator. Yeah. It would just put them in there. So if I gave this program to somebody else, they wouldn't have to have those equations written in first. Right. It would just go and it would plunk them in there, and then when the program ended, it would clear everything as well. So it was mm -hmm. just kind of all self-contained. That's cool. Because otherwise, you know, basically all it was, the function was just it would, you would get it to draw a graph. Yeah. But if somebody had other equations in there, mm -hmm. to begin with, it wouldn't work. So my program would clear everything there and put the new ones in and like that. So cool. It was pretty cool that way. Yeah, so, on the Apple, I could do simple graphics um, for, um, there was this thing called H plot and V plot, mm -hmm. which was basically horizontal and vertical plotting. Mm -hmm. You would literally program in each pixel or line, mm -hmm. and uh, so it wasn't really an art program on it. So if you wanted graphics in your game, you had to manually program the graphics like a line and uh, at a time. Mm -hmm. So you would figure it out. Usually, what most people would do is they would work it out on graph paper. Or they'd sort of draw out their graphic on a graph paper and then figure out the coordinates from that mm -hmm. and then do it on that. So there was, um, you know, a few games that I was working on that uh, I tried doing that just to have like a title screen or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Actually, Jason did some for me, and then it was kind of cool because the way that the Apple II C could do it, because I mean, it's a ridiculously slow processor. I mean, it's nothing like anywhere near what we have today. Um, you would actually see it drawing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd be drawing it really fast, but you could see it draw each individual line. So it would like draw the. It would draw it basically in whatever order you plotted it in the in same the as the TID three would. Yeah. Yeah. So it would like say draw the outline first, and then you'd see it filling everything in. Mm -hmm. So if you did it kind of in a intentionally, in, like in an in intentional order, you could have it draw it in a way that sort of looked cool, you know, that mm -hmm. you know, as if somebody's drawing it as you're watching. Well, you that's what, that's how I did it because with the TI eighty three, you could anything you had that you had graphed, you could save it as a picture. Mm -hmm. There were like ten picture <clears throat> slots, I think. Oh. So that's what I would do is I would save it as a picture on my thing, mm -hmm. and then I would have it just load that picture in the program. So I think I, I had some text that said it was a dark night in the city. And oh, then the okay. picture came up. I was going to eventually write a story in pictures, but I just never got that detailed with it. Yeah. What I was uh, intending to do with my text adventure was I wanted to have artwork for that as well. Of course, I was doing it on the Amiga, mm -hmm. and I was really heavy into the Amiga versus PC thing at the time. So I really wanted to do a game that showcased the Amiga graphics. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it all in 4096 color ham mode, as it was called, which stood for hold and modify. It was basically the best graphics mode that the Amiga could do. Mm -hmm. And it was great for doing like digitized photos and stuff. So I thought, hey, I could do like photos, digitize them, and then incorporate them into the adventure. Because a lot of the text adventures that I would play would have artwork that went with them, mm -hmm. and then it would alternate. You could like say hit the enter key or the tab key to bring up the graphic, or to switch between that and just the page of text of all mm -hmm. the commands you've done or whatever. But I could never figure out how to do that. That was sort of the next thing I was going to figure out how to do, was mm -hmm. how to display the graphics with the text. 
-hmm. So usually it would be like the picture with text at the bottom, like just the last few lines. And then you could switch off the picture to review the last few things you've done. And then you could flip, and then you could toggle it back and forth basically. So I wanted to do that for my adventure to have some, some visuals as well. But I only got as far as working on the story and doing a little bit of programming and then mm -hmm. just never got back to it. <sighs> it's a lot of work to do a game, even just a text adventure. <laughs> <laughs>